Now I'm going to show you today uh, another piece of kit which is the uh, Skywatcher Auto Focuser. Uh, now why it's called an Auto Focuser I don't know because it gives the impression that it auto focuses and it doesn't. It's basically just a motor that fits onto your, onto your focuser uh, with a controller. Uh, so first of all we're just going to take a look at it um, which we don't actually have the funds to, to have a, a custom cameraman to, to do this work for us so it's all down to me. Um, there's the motor as you can see connected to the focuser with um, the, a little bracket and if we follow the cable along you'll get a view of the controller which is there. Uh, a simple little controller with two buttons for in and out focus and a rotary for speed control. So um, let's go and have a closer look at it. Right, we've moved in a little bit closer now. Um, and first of all, we'll just we've got it in the set in the fastest mode at the moment, and you can see the degree of movement that it's got and the speed that it goes at. Now, if we go back over to the control box and we move it to the slowest setting, like so. You can just see we've got a quite a slow movement there, and it, it is it, it's really handy. Um, the thing is that even at that slow speed for photographic work, it still is a little bit difficult. Makes it a lot easier than than trying to use your hands uh, on the focuser. Um, and for viewing, just you know, for standard viewing, it's absolutely indispensable. You don't get any of the shake or anything that you'd get at high magnifications if um, if you start twiddling your focuses by hand. Uh, so for, like I said, for for observing the the worth the weight in gold. Um, the thing is, it starts to get a little bit more difficult when you're imaging. When focusing is really, really critical. And it gets a bit confusing when you're sort of holding this box in your hand and you're trying to work uh, a laptop at the same time with your, with your imaging software. Uh, so in a moment I'm just going to show you a, a prototype, uh, a little something um, that's quite a bit, I think it's quite exciting actually and it is a brilliant piece of kit. So I'm, I'm going to uh, go and get that for you and we'll give you a look at it. Okay, taking focusing um, that little bit more precise and that little bit posher, uh, wouldn't it be brilliant if you could take your motor focuser and connect it up to your laptop so that you've got keys on your laptop uh, to control your in and out focus uh, but be able to do it precisely and to a, a, a much more sensitive degree than you can do with the, with the standard motor. And that's where this comes in. Um, this is a prototype. Uh, as far as I know, I think there's, I think there's actually two of these um, in existence at the moment that are like this. Uh, the, there are similar products on the market. Uh, to be honest, I don't think they're as good as this one. Um, for one, it, um, it doesn't use any of your laptop power, uh, which is a good thing, uh, because obviously your, your laptop power is at a premium when, uh, when you're out in the field somewhere. Uh, just show you around the box a little bit. Uh, we've got... On this one, we have a USB-B connector, which is the same as that goes into a standard printer. Um, so you're going to need a, a USB-A to B lead for that. Uh, and this one's got a, a serial socket on it. Um, now, that will probably change and will make something a little bit more convenient. This was just for sort of ease of build and, and everything, because like I said, it is a prototype. We've also got, uh, on the front of that, a bicolor LED and what that does is it lights up either red or green but quite dimly uh, we've dimmed it down uh, so that it doesn't sort of it isn't too much in your face it's, it's just a visual indication of whether number one your box is working and number two whether you're moving in or moving out um, now this has got as you can see there's a there's a battery case there it takes a, a pp3 battery which is to power your motor um, and as I've said before, there is a, a, another option on the market that uses laptop power, which to me, I think is a really, really bad idea. And you will get weeks and weeks of use out of a PP3 um, just for controlling this, this little motor. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to connect it up and I'm going to sort of show you 
the way that it goes. This, this connects to any Skywatcher motor at the moment. They will actually control any DC motor, but you, you need whatever lead it is to, to sort of connect it up. Um, but basically, this that connector just goes in there, and this one, you just take out the Skywatcher connector, and straight in with that connector. We've got a, a fairly decent long lead on there to, uh, to, to sort of, you know, give you a bit of distance. Uh, you can sort of put it on your on your little spreader plate, on your tripod or somewhere like that. You can even velcro it onto your onto your scope somewhere or your mount or wherever. Uh, it just gives you like you know a bit of play. Um, right, what we're going to do now is if we connect up a USB A to B lead, everybody's seen one of these I think. It's it's just the same as what you have with a with a printer, they cost you about three quid. Um, that just goes in there. And obviously the next thing we need is a laptop. So just give me a minute. Right, here we are with the laptop. Uh, as you can see, we've got the focus controller here, uh, the side of the laptop. Um, and as I said, it's fully ASCOM compliant. Uh, if you, when, once you plug this in, you hear like a little self-test as the relays click over. And once that's finished, we're ready to launch the software. Uh, we've got a piece of custom software just for controlling this, uh, this focuser. Um, but when I come to do the screen grabs uh, shortly, I've uh, got a little bit of a surprise for you. But um, first of all, when we launch the software, because it's ASCOM, it's it's going to ask you sort of what the what the what the piece of kit is that you that you're launching, and um, what com port usually. Uh, so I'll just do that here and put it to the auto focuser. Click OK. And now we've got the, the, the little interface just here, the focusing interface, uh, which as I said, I'll show you in close up shortly. And then if we look on the box now, if I start any sort of movement, you should be able to see a green light there. And if I go in the opposite direction, you see a red light. Now what it does, the, the, this light, as well as um, obviously, you know, it gives you a visual indication. If you're just sort of at home and you've got one of these and you're playing about with it or you're testing it or anything, if you haven't got a telescope connected and you don't hear the motors going, you can still tell that it's working because of the LED. Um, so, right, we've got that connected up. In a few minutes, we're going to go over to um, to close-up mode, sort of do a screen grab and show you the, the software in action. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to close-up in on the focuser and show you the sort of the, the level of precision that we're, we're getting with it because the software is infinitely adjustable. You sort of have to look at this bit and then look at the screen grabs to sort of understand and, and put the two together. But you'll know exactly where it's going when we get to that part. So we'll just move into close up on the focuser next. Right, uh, I've purposely got a close up there of the focuser but also um, the focuser wheel because some of the movement is so so intricate that um, I don't think you, you'll see the amount of travel in the focuser but you might see a little bit of movement in the wheel. Um, first of all in the software we've got what we call a course adjustment which is adjustable. You can you can set sort of your steps um, you know of how, how much you want to move in one go on the uh, on the course section and if we press one of the buttons on the laptop you'll see that that's the, that's the course version that's set at 50. Um, you know, I mean, I can sort of, I can step up to movements of sort of what 200. I you see that. Now, once you've got sort of your coarse focus, you want to go into the into your fine focus. Now, for your fine focus, you can step down right to a step size of one, which is far more intricate than using a standard Skywatcher motorized focuser. It's, it's, it's more intricate than, than just doing the slightest little stab on the buttons or anything because we're, we're doing it with, via computer and software. We're just sending the tiniest little pulse to that focuser. Um, and let's just see, I don't know if, you can, if you'll see it or not, but this is with a step size of, of one um, in the fine mode. That's another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. I know, so I did like what I did, maybe five steps there. Um, uh, obviously, it, it, doing a few more, it just helps you to see that little bit more movement. Um, so in the opposite direction, that's that's a that's a step of one, and that is, and that is, and that is. So you can see that it's it's very very precise. 
um, but we've got a couple of aids in the software as well um, which again I'll show you sort of in close up when I start doing the screen grab um, and as I said we've still got a, an even better surprise for you so we'll, next we'll go over to screen grab and I'll show you exactly how you'll see it on your screen so we'll be back in a moment Right, uh, the first thing we're going to show you is um, this is the software and I'm in close up for you so you can see what's going on. Um, first of all we've got the, the course focus uh, in and out, um, obviously which is focuser in, focuser out and you can set a step size here, um, starts at a minimum of 50 and jumps up in, in increments of 50. Uh, that's for like you, you know your sort of your your, your course adjustments. Um, you know if you've got to come sort of a good way out or a good way in. Uh, once you've got to near where near where you are, where your point of focus is, then you go onto the fine focus side, and that starts off with a set size of one, and you can go up to well up to ten, which is plenty. Um, I tend to sort of use this on one when I'm imaging. Um, I'm also on this screen we've got reverse uh, now what the reverse is for is depending on which side of your focuser you've mounted your motor uh, the in and the out buttons on the piece of software will be the wrong way around you know sort of in will be out and out will be in so you just either leave it unchecked or checked depending on which side of your focuser you've mounted your motor uh, a nice little addition here is this number uh, which at the moment says 2500 now what it does is depending on what your step sizes are, each time that you move in or out, it will alter that number. Uh, you should be able to see that, like now it's a 2600. And if I go with a step size of one and I move in, you see it goes to 2599, or back to 2600, or 2601. Now what this does, it's really clever, is if you're within that same session, um, you know, you, you, you've connected up and everything uh, within that one session it, you can remember then where your focus point is and it's it, for instance if you're swapping bar loads over or you're taking um, the camera out and putting an eyepiece in to just, you know, a wide angle eyepiece to just check up exactly where you are you know, you've got a bit lost sort of thing um, when you swap back again you know what number to, to send your focuser to um, to get you, you know, bang on again um, in fact, technically you won't get bang on because, you know, I mean, usually you will, but you might just find that it's you've moved your camera in that little bit more or you haven't pushed it in quite enough, but it's it's pretty precise and it's a, it's a really big help that. Um, that's basically it for, the, for this piece of software. There's the setup button, which is it's just to, to do what you've already done when you launch the software and set up um, your com port and stuff. Uh, again, it's, it's just another another way of doing it from, from within the software. Uh, you might find that if you're starting to plug different pieces of kit in that are using different COM ports or virtual COM ports, you might start to have a bit of a conflict and you can just use the setup button to sort of move things around. Um, and that's about it for this one. Uh, except, like I said, I've got a, a little bit of a surprise that's, that's really exciting and I'm going to bring that bit up next. Right, this is the exciting part. Uh, as you can see this is a sharp cap screen um, now you can see some bits and bats here in the capture screen that's because um, the, it's just a camera that's lying down on the desk somewhere um, but sharp cap won't, won't start up without a camera plugged in so I've just had to basically you know push a camera in and, and, and start the software up but the exciting part about this is that um, this is a, a special version um, written by Robin uh, user RWG who, who writes sharp cap and who also wrote the uh, the software for the focuser if you take a look in this area we've actually now got the focuser software built into sharp cap and it's a brilliant addition it, Robin's sort of excelled here it's, it's a brilliant piece of kit because you're not taking your concentration away from uh, from from your, your image and your focusing um, you know like you would be if you've sort of got the the, the normal skywatcher focus controller uh, and you, you're sort of pressing with a finger or you're twiddling a button and you're looking over there and you're looking over here and checking if that's okay um, like I say you can watch your picture on the screen your image here and you can you know you can you can change your focus then and, and still concentrate on what it is that you're doing 
Um, so bit major pat on the back for, for Robin for that one because he's he's sort of you know he, he's just brought it all together brilliantly, and that's about it really for this one. But uh, I think you'll agree it's a, it's a pretty nice piece of kit the um, the USB focusing controller, um, and that's about it. That's uh, that's about all I've got to show you on it. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you again.